How's everybody doing? I'm I Think You Know, and welcome back to City Skylines, East Yorkshire, and the city of Kingston. And today we have a very special 10th episode. I always intended this to be in the range of 20, 25 episodes, as, as I think I've mentioned before, but being that this is my first YouTube series, first time doing this for City Skylines, I really wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to stick with it and put in the time and the effort to put out consistent episodes. And while I'm definitely not putting out episodes as quickly as I'd like to, uh, I think I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty stoked that we've gotten this far. And to get this far, we're essentially taking some uh, fan requests here. So I'm going to be working on level two or area two uh, of the map that I called out at the end of episode nine, which you should definitely check out if you haven't already. But as a whole, this episode is very much focused on planning, on building roads out, on planning the city for the future. And in honor of that, the time lapse here is only going to be about 10, 11 minutes long. And after that, the live play will be extended. It'll be the longest live play we've ever done. And I'm hoping to do something in the realm of 8 to 10 minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll see when we get there. But what you're seeing being built in the background here first is the residential area just to the northwest of the city. And in Hull, in real life, this area is a bit of a mix. You have some low income, older housing. You have some nicer, more grand style, separate Victorian homes. And what I was really going for aesthetically here was to make sure that the types of housing varied quite regularly. In a city like this, you have, and in really in any city, it, the way the residential is going to get built is, is really more organically. You're not just, as you do in the modern world, finding a large plot of land and building an enormous estate. You're more likely back then to have one company build one area while the next area behind it is not developed yet. And then that area might get developed by an entirely different company um, a year, five years, a decade later. And because of that, the housing styles are going to vary quite a bit. So for this main frontage road, I've put in this really tight Victorian housing. And we had used some of this, uh, these assets before over by the industrial area in the previous episode but I think they worked really well here. Uh, in real life, this area has larger homes and more backyards, but I kind of wanted to switch up the dynamic and make this area a little bit tighter, a little bit lower income, and kind of you know front the road with all these different shops, bars, and restaurants, while saving some more diverse looking housing for other parts of the build. I've also threw in a school earlier uh, during this time lapse uh, just to help balance out that need as the population continues to grow and you'll see it ticking up there in the bottom uh, edge of the screen. A little over 7,000 now and I believe by the time we get to the time lapse we might be at eight or 9,000. Another big reason for me keeping the time lapse short this time is that it's it could otherwise be very repetitive. I'm essentially building the road network to fit in the housing I want to build. And then it's just a matter of copying and pasting that housing and move it over and over again, doing some, uh, throwing in some assets, some props to get the level of detail up a little bit. But I thought it would be pretty boring to kind of just keep showing me pasting housing over and over again. So when we do get to the live play at the end, you'll see that a lot of housing is built that you haven't seen on screen yet, but it really matches what we've already been doing. Um, and the other, most important part about this entire build overall uh, for this episode is planning. Uh, what I've noticed that a lot of other City Skylines YouTubers do is they really build a lot of their road network out in advance. And that's not to say that they keep it exactly the same. They're always going to tweak it as they continue to move forward. But uh, I've left so much of the map blank. Um, you know, this is a fairly tree list map. And without having the roads there, it makes some of my wider shots not look so great. And it makes the planning more difficult for me. So what you're seeing in the background first was building out a rail line. And this rail line is actually going to be for the freight rail. So all that rail you see up on that berm, that raised uh, earth, essentially, 
uh, with all of the, uh, the bridge-based overpasses, that's going to carry freight rail into my massive industrial zone by the water. And I haven't quite decided what to put there yet, but there definitely will be freight rail and really some, some very heavy industry. And then for the rest of, the, of this area, again, that area too, that huge chunk northwest of the city center, I'm just kind of laying in a, in a road network that makes sense for city skylines. Not too many intersections, you know, trying to think ahead for traffic flow, but also put roads in in a way that allows me to build that diverse amount of housing. Uh, I really want to be able to put in Victorian buildings in some areas, but also more modern council flat, post-war, denser housing in others. Uh, but one area that I really wanted to build and I had the suggestion of from one of the viewers, so uh, thank you for that. And please continue to comment and let me know what you'd like to see. Um, if, and even better, if you could you know, hit subscribe, hit a like button, and, and get to see these videos again in the future. But I definitely wanted to build that higher income housing area. And in Hull, in real life, there is an area just to the northwest of the city referred to as the avenues. And these are these very wide tree-lined streets with roundabouts in the middle that are just flanked by these larger semi-attached, mostly detached Victorian homes. And in modern times, a lot of those have been converted into flats. So maybe they're not quite as grand as they used to be and they don't have single families living in them, but they're still really lovely homes. And I think for this build of Kingston, we're going to imagine them as single family homes as the way they used to be and just really make it look like a nice high income area. Uh, I got to decide what to put on the other edge of this road to really boost the value. Probably have to throw in some more parks, but you know, I think having these be a little bit isolated, having it be near the school is really going to help a lot. And when we do get to the live play, you will see that this area is already beginning to hustle and bustle quite a bit. And that's even before it's fully built out or, um, have any real transit put in or, or anything that really keeps the citizens quite a bit happier. So again, you're seeing I'm just laying down these homes and these assets are a little tough to work with because they, they kind of fit together a little bit awkwardly. They all have different fencing around them, but what I ended up doing is using a lot of decals. So either driveway decals in the front and grass details in the back. Um, you'll see a little bit of that here, but you'll see most of it in the live play and just trying to put a level of detail in that makes sense. I'm not trying to go overboard. I don't want to completely tank my frame rate, but I need to make it look good. And I think we've done that and you'll see it in much greater detail in the live play. On the other main road, so on the Northwest corner of the city center, there's a, a massive um, interchange. And right now it's a standard box junction with some slip roads and City Skylines doesn't really handle that very well, so that's going to get replaced. I think I'm going to replace it with the roundabout, which is not how it is in real life, but again, we don't really have to mimic real life 100%. I want to add my own flair to it, and I think a roundabout will handle the traffic flow there much more easily. But the other main road leading out of the north in real life, that's Beverly Road. In our game, that'll be whatever we name the smaller city to the north of here, TBD. But... In real life, this area is kind of like, maybe it used to be nice, but it certainly isn't anymore. And I did put in that large supermarket with the parking lot, which I think looks fantastic. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that in greater detail in the live play. And then just, I did find a nice spot for the bus depot with, with some props in there. It looks excellent. And just like, you know, a cheap pub, some rundown housing, trying to make it look a little grittier um, with a reasonable amount of detail being put in there. And yeah, in this area overall, I'm pretty happy with, but uh, I still need to work on fitting in and filling in the rest of the housing around there because I'd really like to get that entire Northwest chunk done. But much like the industrial area in the last episode, it's a lot. It was maybe a little bit, again, a little bit more biting off that I could chew, but it needs to be done. Uh, the city can't grow until we get more people living in it. And I, this is something that kind of bugs me with a lot of other City Skylines YouTubers, and I'm not dissing anybody, I'm not calling anybody out. Everyone does these things their own way. But you'll see these enormous, beautiful cities being built and they have like 10,000 people living in them. Um, 
I don't want that. I want, I'm not trying to make the city have 200,000 people, but I'd like there to be a reasonable level of growth in the city. And of course, the, the citizen count in city skylines does not accurately reflect what a, a citizen count would be in a real city, but um, I want to see traffic. I want to see movement. I want to see the city come alive. And, and that's always been a part of my ethos for how I build in city skylines to make sure that it's not just about detail and appearance, but functionality as well. Um, I think that tries to help make things a little bit more unique and just kind of plays into my style a little bit better. And I feel like I haven't even been talking for that long, but we are already at the last minute of the time lapse. And what I'm trying to fit in here is a particularly difficult area of the city. A lot of these, again, a different kind of Victorian home for this particular housing estate, but it doesn't quite fit in too well because you get this angled street at the end and there's so few cornered buildings in the workshop. But you see, I'm finding some tricks here to make it work and you'll see some more buildings built out that way in the live play, which is coming up here in about 10, 15 seconds. So again, stick around for the live play. Thank you for showing up for the time lapse and watching along. Uh, and thank you for being here for 10 episodes. Uh, I couldn't have done it without all of you. And I'm looking forward to see some continued growth for this channel. And the way we're going to do that is by showing you a fantastic live play right now. All right. And we're back in the live play. As promised, as I said before, this is going to be an extended live play. What we're going to look at first is an in-depth view of what was built in this episode. And then we're going to zoom back out and look more at the future and now that we're done with 10 episodes, what, what might be coming in the next 10 and what I kind of have on my mind. So first I'll take you in and show you the real three or four sections of this build that happened um, during this episode. So on the first part here is essentially where we've built some older, more cramped style housing, some front facing low density commercial and essentially filled in this large, almost triangular piece here. Um, uh, for the moment, I've left this area empty, and you can see I did change the intersection here to be a roundabout. This roundabout is absolute garbage, and it will not be staying. It's, it's more proof of concept than anything. I, I think it does show that a roundabout will work better here, but it needs to be better. It's just not there yet. Um, one bit of footage that I cut out was this little park over here. I figured that this pretty cramped area needed some green space and, you know, just a simple park, very lightly detailed, but um, I just, I continue to use these paths a lot and I really love them. And you can see since this, this square kind of connects everything around it. What is, what is this car doing here? Get out of there. And yeah, this park is just kind of like nicely sitting there, a little bit of green space and... I did show the building of this supermarket in the time lapse, but while I was working on this before recording the live play, I did kind of fill in some additional housing around the margins here. Just kind of stuck in some side roads, um, actually put in some, you know, more council style modern housing over here with a small parking lot and really just trying to fill in the gaps wherever they are. And wherever there are little tiny gaps, I've just stuck in a bunch of foliage and trees and you know, tried to make the area look nice. And I'm actually pretty happy with how this came out, particularly this little row of houses here with the small parking lot behind it. I think uh, you know, that gives some level of modernity to the otherwise pretty old looking housing around it. And then what I mentioned in the time lapse was all about transitioning more properly. So for this area, I, I made the nice transition between the older housing and the slightly newer housing with the larger backyards that not only work around to these two straight roads here, and this has all been filled in from what you saw on the time lapse, but uh, really happy with how this came out. Just threw in some commercial buildings to round out the edges. I haven't quite found something for this spot yet. I'm not sure what I'm going to put there, but. Uh, I'm sure I'll fill that in in the future off camera. And again, with these paths, just they work really well. If, if you put them in the right spot, they're great filler. They make sense for the kind of, you know, East Yorkshire, UK uh, build that we're doing here. And 
after we transition out of these Victorian terrace homes, here is one of the main roads. So this road, uh, this particular area of road layout, I did kind of mimic what is in, in a hole in real life. Uh, this being uh, Princess Ave or a Prinny Ave as it's often called. And I did start putting in all the commercial buildings, really just, you know, pub, 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 and, and then some other buildings put in between it. But I'm hoping that even though this was just built, that it'll start to get a little bit more lively. But I need to have a bit of a break and a transition between this road here and all the fancy housing over here. Now, I haven't quite fully filled in this area yet. I still have this big patch down here. Um, as well as this patch over here. But uh, for now, it's just, it's what I wanted. It's peaceful, it's quiet, it's wealthy, it's separated, even though it's really not that far from the rest of the city, uh, which to those residents would be a perk because they get to, you know, have the best of both worlds. They have a little school nearby. So it really is almost a self-contained community over here. And then what else you saw in the time-lapse just looking at what we're going to be building here is for planning in the future is I stuck in all the roads down here. I stuck in all the roads up here. Uh, a lot of this will be more Victorian housing, but I think the further and further I get out from the city, the more and more modern housing there's going to be. So again, I think some of these flats like this, you'll see in a lot of these cul-de-sac style cut off roads, just jam packed in with housing, footpaths, parking lots, um, just all the trappings of modern living and uh, I don't know when I'll quite get to these areas since I'm hoping this build has given me enough residential to allow me to move on to other parts of the city right now, but uh, they'll get filled in at some point. Uh, and then in terms of overall planning, you did see that I put in the rail line during the time lapse, but off camera I also stuck in this train station over here now in real life there is no train station like this over here but i really wanted to make sure there's a good amount of mass transit options in my build and this area right here is where i'm planning to put the university now i don't know which episode that's going to be i'm hoping with some time within the next five uh, but putting in a nice university here with some additional housing and shops abutting this main road before it lets me transition as you can see, I kind of marked here with this farmland, but I want all this to be the transition from city to farmland before it transitions back into a smaller city up here well, where this rail line will eventually curve into. It's, it's not going to stay straight like this. Uh, so that's one big step of the future. Of course, all of this needs to get filled in. Uh, I really want to make progress on finishing the city center, particularly this northwest portion and this area next to the train station. but. Until I get the roundabout here just right and working properly, I don't want to build any of this because it's going to end up interfering and I'm going to end up having to delete things anyway and, and I really don't want to go that route. So uh, not really quite sure what I'm going to do next, but uh, I want to get in the large shopping area down here. I want to work my way out towards the bridge. The bridge is going to come here and I think that'll be a fun episode to do just a whole bunch of infrastructure and interchanges uh, to make that function correctly. Uh, to eventually get over to the other side. And I really, I don't know how much I'm going to get to this side of the river in this series at all, but at least connecting all of this together, the southern roads to the bridge will give the city a little bit more character. And for right now, that's it. So let me know what you'd like to see next. As always, I could do some industrial down here. We could do the shops over here. I could maybe work towards the marina. Uh, I have a lot of options here and I'm just really excited to keep filling in as much as I can in this city. I really want this to go another 10 to 15 episodes before we close it out. Uh, you know, this, this village, this YouTube series for me, this is a way for me to learn and get better about doing YouTube series so my next project can be even more big and grand and more in my wheelhouse, more American, more city built, more city based and I'm hoping we can take that journey together. So as always, hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Thank you as always for showing up. 10 episodes, I cannot believe we did it, but damn, we did it. Thank you again, bye.